Good morning. Welcome to our service here at St. Martin's on this Pentecost Sunday. It's lovely to see uh, lots of you here in the building with us. You're very welcome. And it's lovely to have you with, joining with us online wherever you are this morning. So today is Pentecost Sunday, and we will celebrate the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on the disciples on that first Pentecost. So this morning, now we'll continue our uh, sermon service series, even, on Acts, um, and our worship is going to reflect Pentecost and that celebration. There will be children's groups this morning. Um, and the children will get to go to those after the first song. Um, Nikki, our worship leader, will give you the cue. And then if you just head to the back, the leaders um, will make themselves known then. And the very little ones, preschool, will go into the back room. And all the other children will go down to the hall uh, with the leaders. And then come back in time for the end of the service. A couple of notices of things that are happening. Uh, a new Alpha course online will start on Tuesday. So if you want to know more about the Christian faith, if you want to explore it a bit further, or if you just want to ask some questions about life itself, Alpha is the place to go for that. So we're doing an online course, and uh, Phil, our curate, who's over to my right, is waving, um, is leading that. So if you'd like to get involved in that, do uh, speak to Phil if you're here in the building after the service, or get in contact with the church office, he can give you more details. We've got another 24 hours of prayer coming up this week, starting at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, that's the 26th, running till 10 a.m. on the Thursday. Some of you will have had an email via church suite with some more details about that, um, so do read that and do pass that on to anyone who you think may not have got that. Um, and do sign up for an hour of prayer. So it's not you don't have to pray for the whole 24 hours, but the encouragement is to pray for an hour. Um, if you can, sign up and put your name so we can see who's praying, that's great, but just pick an hour and pray. And we're praying about prayer and how we pray, and we're asking God to teach us to pray better, to pray more, to, be, uh, to enjoy our prayer life more. We also hope to have the church open for a lot of that 24 hours, but it does need stewards to be in here um, just to sort of man that. So if you're able to um, give an hour or two during that 24 hours to be here in the church as a steward to allow people to come in and pray, um, please get in touch with the um, church office um, so that we can facilitate that. A couple of weeks ago, we welcomed the Leswells back with us uh, for a visit. Um, they're here again this morning, and Steve's going to chat to them now. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. I was going to move us out of the way so they can come down. So do you want to... Come on down, the Leswell family. Uh, it's great to welcome you all back. So if, um, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves in a moment, but if you've, if you've not met David and Mary and the clan here, um, they've been, where have you been for the last year and three months? Uh, we've you can take your mask off now we're up here. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, so we've been in Bosnia. We moved out in February last year. It's good to be back. Good to see friendly faces, new faces. Excellent. It's been... Interesting, yeah, I don't know how to summarise it shortly, but it's been, when we were there we said it's been the best year of our lives and the most difficult year at the same time. And I know many people have had difficult years the last year, um, but yeah, just things like we're living really remotely in the mountains, there is a, a town there that we live in, um, but freezing cold through the winter, a lot of snow, heat, log burning to keep warm, uh, new experience, never I'll never be ungrateful for central heating again. Um, yeah, we're language learning a lot. That's our main focus at the moment, is we're learning the local language, and we have a lot of tuition for that, and we're trying to spend as much time as we can with local people. Um, and so our language goes good, but I think the downside to living so remotely is that no one speaks any English, and so we have enough local language to... To, um, to get by, but not enough really to have those heart-to-heart -heart connections that we're really longing for. So hopefully they'll come as time goes on. Brilliant. So there are important things in life, aren't there? There's faith, there's spirituality, and then there's food. So, um, so Eloise, uh, what's your favourite food in Bosnian? I like burek. Burek. I don't miss 
Spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> she doesn't have one, but I think slada lead, ice cream, no, chavathi. So it's a lot of meat, a lot of bread. Um, bread with your sandwich, bread with breakfast, oh, bread like with hamburgers every Hamburgers every day, isn't it fantastic? Yeah. And so Mary, what, how, are you, how are you? How's your, uh, what's it like for you there? Uh, yeah, it's good, but also difficult. It is, like David said, uh, quite isolating. I'm enjoying language learning. Um, and yeah, I feel like we've got to like a functional stage now, but you, we've like had to figure out how to like, stay in touch with people here and do Zooms and things because it's difficult not being able to speak to people. You want to say hello? How's it for you? Yeah, good. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's a real pleasure to, to welcome you back. You're here for a month, aren't you? Uh, David's, um, I think you're getting your doctor qualifications back again. Um, but mo the most important thing we can do, I think, for you now is to pray for you. So anything particular you'd like us to pray for you about? I think our, our ongoing language learning, uh, that was definitely really stuck into that for another year. And then sort of vision going forward for the future. Um, and yeah, I need my license out there to work and, and that's not, not been forthcoming yet. So pray for that too. Brilliant. So let's pray, shall we? If you want to stretch out your hands towards them. So we're going to pray for, pray for the Holy Spirit to anoint this amazing family. Thank you, Lord, that you have called them to speak your word to people who've not heard it. Thank you, Lord, that you've called them to be your light, to be your servants in this place. And Lord, it's such an uncertain place, as you said, that foxes have got places to go, but you hadn't. And I'm sure it must feel that way to, the, to them sometimes. So Lord, we pray for, pray for their situation, we pray for their language learning, and we pray for everything about them being there. But above all, Lord, we pray that your spirit will anoint them and that they will really understand and know that they are your servants. Lord, bless them and we commission them in Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. So good to see you. Good. Back to you, Rachel. Just before Nikki leads us in worship, I have Bands of Marriage to publish. So I published the Bands of Marriage between Luke Samuel Noel Johnson, divorced of Liscard, and Gemma Louise Cape, single of Liscard. This is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let's pray for Luke and Gemma now. Lord God, we thank you for this couple who've made the decision to marry and to marry here in church in your name. Lord, would you bless them in their preparations and Lord, would you bless them in their life together. Lord, we thank you for Luke and Gemma. Amen. So let's do what we're really here to do this morning and that's worship. Can I ask you to stand as we prepare to worship? And on this Pentecost Sunday, we stand waiting and wanting to meet with you, Lord Jesus. And as we worship, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? We've been looking at Acts 2 and how the first disciples lived and how they acted as a church. But what enabled them to do that was what happened at the beginning of that chapter. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Let's worship and ask for the Holy Spirit to anoint us this morning.
you Jesus and as the children now go out to their groups we just want to pray for them a moment so let's just take a moment and pray for the children and the leaders Lord Jesus I pray for your outpouring of your Holy Spirit to be with the children and their leaders and the young people this morning I pray that they would be able to meet with you this morning that they would come to know more of your great love for them and Lord we just pray that you would be with them this morning in Jesus' name, amen. We continue to worship now, and we continue to welcome God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit with us this morning. be more than this 
Jesus, we, Lord, we worship you. Come have your way with us this morning. In, in all the circumstances, we've arrived at church this morning or we're watching church from online and all those things that are on our heart, Lord, may they just be wiped away that we can just focus and worship you. And we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you you do not know that you haven't left us as orphans, that you provide us with this comforter and that you long to just be with us, to be in relationship with you. So Lord, we continue this morning, we're going to continue to worship you and say, great are you, Lord, that you are great. And we make that fresh commitment this morning when we say, be sovereign, be sovereign in our hearts, be sovereign in our lives, be sovereign in our families, in our friendships, in our jobs, in all our circumstances in our life, we pray and we, we make that fresh commitment. Be sovereign this morning, Lord Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Amen.
Lord, this morning we pour out our praise to you. You are great, almighty, and awesome God. But you're not a God that is, is distant or that leaves us, but you are a God that is present with us. And present through your power of your Holy Spirit. That's not limited by time or space or anything human. Pentecost Day that we can celebrate the gift of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, not, not just celebrate it, but receive it. So this morning as we worship you, Lord, we give our worship to you, but we open ourselves to receive your Spirit as well. Lord, thank you. 
Thank you that you want to bless each of us. You want to touch each of us with your spirit. Nobody is outside of that. Nobody is beyond reach. Lord, when we come with open hearts before you, forgive us and you fill us with your spirit so Lord would you fill us this morning in the same way that you filled those first disciples let us not be ashamed of the gospel but rather share your love and the good news that we have. So Lord, as we are filled this morning, as we receive from you, we look to how, what, how we can take that out to our community, to our town, to our country, and to the wider world. Help us not to keep this good news to ourselves here within this building. Take us out, Lord. Give us boldness to share. Give us opportunities to tell of your love and your power. And so we pray this morning for those we know who are struggling, for whom life is difficult. We lift them before you now. We name them either out loud or in our hearts. speak into those situations and Lord would you speak to us show us if there is anything we can do to help or to be for those people we pray for our town for this local area as a whole, as life opens up and we have more freedom and more opportunities, Lord, would you guide the decision makers? There are still difficult decisions to make in the weeks ahead. Lord, for those upon whom that responsibility rests, would you give them wisdom and understanding? Lord, give them the extra insight. And Lord, help us to play our part. Lord, guide us all as we find our way through this time. Help us to be kind to others, to understand each other, and to help where we can. Pray for those areas around the world where there is violence and unrest. And this morning we pray particularly for Palestine and Israel. We thank you, Lord, for the ceasefire. Lord, may it hold and allow for peace talks. And may those talks bring true understanding and enable a way for people to live side by side in peace. Lord, we pray for those bringing hope to devastated communities. 
for those bringing aid and resources to rebuild. And Lord, we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in both Palestine and Israel. Lord, would you empower them this morning on Pentecost Sunday with your Holy Spirit, that they may be able to shine out love and hope to all. Lord, we thank you that you are in these places. Sometimes it can seem that you're not, but Lord, we know and we have faith and trust that you are there and you are at work. And so we bless that work and we ask for your spirit to empower that work this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you did not leave the disciples on their own but you gave to them and you give to us today the gift of your Holy Spirit so that we may know you, know your love for us and experience you at work in our lives. So Lord, we receive your spirit afresh in our lives this morning. Thank you that you are with us and we don't have to do anything special, Lord. We just have to welcome you. And so as Nikki leads us again in some worship, take that time to be open to God's Spirit. your breath in our lungs and we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs and we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour Amen. You are great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Nikki, and the rest of the band. And Niall's going to come and speak to us now um, with the, the next part of our series on Acts and kind of the next part of his little mini-sermon series um, on worship. So just as he gathers himself, let me pray for him. Father God, we thank you for Niall, for the word that you've laid on his heart to share with us now. Would you give him boldness and courage to speak it out? And Lord, would you give us open hearts and minds to receive it this morning? Amen. One, two, come on. Is this on? I did this last week. Sorry, Pete. Oh, good morning, everybody. It's the, uh, the difficult second sermon. Right, so we just start with um, re reading the, our reading again. And uh, those of you who have been 
with us. I know there's some people who haven't been with us uh, every week for the last while, but we've been reading this for quite a while now. We're getting to know it really well. But um, here we go. It's, so it's Acts 2, verse 42 through to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okay. I want to start today by really embarrassing some friends of mine, Chris and Claire, who are here for the first time from Bristol. Let's give them a round of applause. And not only that, but I'm going to embarrass them even further because I'm going to tell you all about Chris and Claire. And I'm going to be in so much trouble. But anyway, Chris, I've known Chris for a long time, for about 15, 16 years. We used to work together in a, a school for children with disabilities and various uh, educational needs. We worked there for a couple of years, and uh, we just became really good friends, and that's, that's carried on through. And Chris is, uh, I would say Chris is a strong leader, okay? I would say he's, um, he's quite uh, passionate when he believes in something, he really, really sticks with it, and he, you know, he'll go for it 100%. Uh, he's also, uh, you, you could say, maybe he's outspoken sometimes, and, uh, well, I'm really embarrassing you here, mate. Uh, and if he, if he feels um, a real strong sense of justice about a particular issue, you know, he, he will not be afraid to confront you on it if he, if he feels that you're in the wrong. And uh, it's, uh, it's all, these are all good qualities, by the way, mate. And uh, he's also very compassionate and really cares about the people around him. And uh, it's evident in the work that he's done pretty much all his adult, adult life. Now, I haven't, I haven't known Claire quite so long. Um, we, I remember meeting Claire just before our daughter Edie was born, so about 10 years ago. And I remember us going to the pub and meeting them there and Chris introducing Claire to us. And I rem remember we went away from there, me and Hannah, and we said, wow, she's so good for Chris. She is exactly what he needs. And she's very different to him. She, she's quite quiet, quite shy, doesn't really like the spotlight. Sorry, Claire. Um, and I, I really can tell I'm going to be in trouble. Anyway, uh, she's also very compassionate, I think, as well, really cares about the people around her. A good, a good mom, really cares about her family and her friends. And uh, I think the two of them together make a brilliant team. Their differences sort of, you know, uh, complement each other really well. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Why is Niall standing up here and banging on about Chris and Claire, who we've only just met? Well, I haven't seen them for a couple of years with COVID and, you know, moving down here and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but all, all of that I've just told you about them, I absolutely, hand on heart, can tell you is 100% true. I know that what I just told you is true. Absolutely true. They are, I can hand on heart commend them as friends. Go, go and meet them and find out for yourself. But I can tell you now that they're, they're worth getting to know. But I know that because I have experience of them, of working together and being friends with them over years. And even... Even though I haven't actually um, seen them for a little while and I don't know every, you know, all the most recent information of where they're at or what have you, I still know that basic stuff that I just told you completely 100%. And I think this is a lot like when we praise, when we come to God in praise, with praise, and we praise God. It's about remembering who God is what he's done, and what he's like. So, if you think of, you know, now you guys have a little bit of an idea of what Chris and Claire are like. However, I'm, I'm picturing different stuff when I tell you this. 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of times that I've had with them. I'm thinking of, you know, uh, experiences that I've had with them. And that's, what I'm, that's where my memories are. And so I, have a, I, I know what I've just told you on a completely different level than you do. But like I say, go and get to know them. Um, and I think this is really, really important. So if, if, if praising God is about remembering who God is, what he's done for us, and what he's like, well, then we can't praise God unless we know some of those things. We, unless we know who God is, something of God, at least of who God is. Unless we know something of what he's done, and unless we know something of what he's like. And last week we started, I, I gave this little picture, didn't I, of, of, uh, of, of breathing. Of imagining our worship like breathing, inhaling and exhaling. You know, inhaling is this kind of what we fill ourselves with. And exhaling is, is what we give back. And praise definitely falls into the exhaling category. But well, one of the things I said was, you know, what we fill ourselves directly impacts what we can give back to God what we can give out. And how could we praise God if we didn't know what he was like and who he was and what he's done for us? So it really comes back again to this breathing picture, this inhaling and exhaling, which I, I found very helpful, at least in my walk with God. So I don't know what, about you today or any day, but sometimes... I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't really feel like praising God some days. In fact, you know what? Today has not been the easiest so far. Uh, our little boy Elijah got up at half past three this morning and didn't go back to bed. So, uh, you know, I'm a bit tired and Hannah is very tired and Elijah is very tired. Um, now, <sighs> In those moments, sometimes I find it hard to praise God. Why? Why do I find it hard? Well, I think it's probably because I get stuck a little bit in my circumstance. You know, I wanted a full night's sleep, <laughs> for example. Uh, um, but Elijah wasn't going to let that happen. Um, so I think also what happens is that in those moments, we forget. You know, it's, it's amazing, at least I know for myself, it's unbelievable how quickly I forget what God has done for me. It really is. I am, um, well, I'm really going for the uh, embarrassing people uh, path today. Um, when I was dating Hannah, sorry, Han, uh, I went and visited her at her parents' house, and uh, we were having a cup of tea, and... <laughs> Uh, the subject of birthdays and birthday cakes came up, and Hannah said, "I really am now in very much a lot of trouble." Um, Hannah said to her mum, "What? Why did you like never, you know, make any of those like those really, you know, customized sort of cakes? You know how how people have, you know, kids like their favorite cartoon character, or maybe it's their favorite football team, or whatever it is." Uh, why did you never make any cakes like that for, for us when we were growing up? And of course, there was a look of horror on her mum's face, and she walked out of the room, and it was a bit awkward. She came back with a photo album that had the title Birthday Cakes on it. And she had, all through their childhood, she had made all these cakes and worked really hard. And I still love to remind Hannah of this story. Because it was, it was just so, imagine, you know, imagine being, being her mum and making all that, the, the, that effort to, for it to be forgotten, completely forgotten. And then, of course, as Hannah looked through the, the, the photo album, oh, yeah, oh, thanks. <laughs> you know, you did do all that stuff that I completely forgot that you did. And I think we're a bit like, I, I put my hand up at least, you might not be. But I am definitely like that with God sometimes. I forget so quickly what he's done for me. You know, we've just, um, we've just bought this camper van. 
well, it's a, just a van, and I'm trying to make it a camper van. But anyway, we took our sort of maiden voyage, all of us together in the van. We went up to the top of Carradon Hill yesterday and uh, had a little bit of hot chocolate at the top of the hill and looked out. We didn't do any walking. We just stood there and drank the hot chocolate. And I just felt like, oh, thank you, God, this is amazing, you know. I, we, this, thank you for your provision. Thank you for this incredible, you know, beautiful place. I tell you what, I was not thinking that at 3.30 this morning. I can tell you that for a fact. I was not thinking about how good God was at 3.30 this morning. And, you know, it's so hard to remember sometimes in our circumstances. And what, what are the things that, that, that hold us back from praising God? You know, it, can, it, might, it might be tiredness, a little bit of lack of sleep, but it might be much worse circumstances or much worse feelings that we have. It might be anger. You know, why didn't you answer my prayer, God? It might be disappointment. Why was it not the answer I was looking for that came? It might be uh, anxiety and worry and fear. It might be shame. Everybody else seems to have everything sorted, but I don't. And I don't, so I don't feel like coming to God with the way I am. Because everybody else is sorted and I'm not. So what is it? What is it that maybe holds us back sometimes? Maybe we just forget. But maybe there are other things that stand in our way. Maybe there are other barriers that stand in our way. And a little bit later, I, do what, I just want to pray for us that if there are those things that stand in our way, that God would help remove them. But why is it uh, important to praise? Well, if we, th- if we probably the, the, I would say probably the most um, synonymous with praise story in the Bible must be the story of Job, I would have thought. People talk about that all the time, you know, and how, all of this, I'm not going to go into the, the details of the story, read it, it is dramatic to say the least. He just loses everything, basically. He loses absolutely everything. And you could go off on a whole other tangent of, well, why did God let that happen? And, and you know, all of that. I'm not going to do that today. What, what I'm interested in today is his response. And if, uh, if you want to turn to Job 1, if you have your Bible... Um, right, I mean, it all the, the, the really in crazy stuff happens right in the first chapter. But he, he, he says in uh, verse 21, this is Job's response to all of this stuff happening to him. Naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked I shall depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And that is, I mean, it's quite a sobering response to what has happened to him, isn't it? And I think it's easy to, uh, I've I've experienced this sometimes um, in church, where the reaction to this story is that it's almost like he's saying, keep calm and carry on, you know? Uh, But, you know, stiff upper lip, upper lip, upper lip, I can't say it, kind of thing. But I don't think it's that at all. Uh, I think it's much more like the Leonard Cohen, Cohen song where he says the cold and broken hallelujah. I think it's, it's through the devastation of those circumstances. St- it, 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 he must have had, he must have had such an experience of God to know that, that, was sti- that God was still the one he could trust in that circumstance. He just must have. To have that, all of that happen to him, and he can still hold on and say, ah, I, I praise you anyway. It's yours anyway. I pray, I praise you. I think it's, it's, it's through the circumstances, not ignoring them. I think it's through those circumstances, still holding on. Because the power of God, he knew the, pow- the power of God must be greater than these circumstances. And he, and he was able to remember in that moment. So I don't, I don't think it's just keep calm, carry on, praise God. I think it's remembering in those moments. And what does that do to you? 
when you remember who God is in those moments. I'm pretty certain, at least in my life, what it does for me is it completely changes my perspective. We have a, um, there's a group of us who on Tuesday nights we, we get on Zoom and we worship and pray together. And it's, but we've done, done it all through the pandemic. And uh, we, you know, it took a little while to get, get used to the, the logistics of it, but now we, we really are. And I can tell you, without fail, and the moments when I get on that, that call and, and, and sometimes I don't feel like praising God, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I don't feel like it. It's seven o'clock on a Tuesday night. The kids are knackered. We just had dinner and we've been cleaning up. And they're try, we try, Hannah's trying to get the kids to bed while I'm there singing praises. Doesn't always feel, I don't always feel like it's welling up inside of me, this, this praise, you know. But I can tell you that with absolute certainty, without fail, every single time, my perspective changes. I'm, I'm not just saying that. It's real. My perspective changes. I, somehow I can see a little bit outside of my circumstance. And I remember who God is. I remember what he's done. I remember what he's like and where I've seen it in my life. And what I've read of him in the Bible and through other things, whether it's, I don't know if you listen to podcasts or you read books or what you do, you know, other things that can really help. But it, what, they can, what you can really do is it help, it help you remember who he is. And in those moments when we praise God, I think that's what we do. We remember. So to, to kind of, to finish on this, the, the, the thing I just want to, because I've talked about this and it feels like a very individual thing. You know, it's me, my walk with God. And we talk about this breathing picture, you know, me inhaling and me exhaling. But of course, this is a corporate thing. And we come back to this passage in Acts. It's everything together, as I said last week. It's all together. There's, you know, they're not talking about, and this person did that and that, and this person did it. They, it's all they, it's all plural. But praise comes right at the end of this passage, which I think is really interesting. You know, so when, when, I, when I talk about um, needing, needing to know God and who he is and what he's done and um, what he's like, well, it starts with saying that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to breaking bread, to fellowship, to prayer. And I think this, the, these, are, these are the parts where they started to know who God was. And then they were filled with awe, seeing what the, what the incredible things that God was doing. And I think that's, that's probably more where they started to see what God, what God was like for themselves. And they end up that they're praising God. And I th so I think it's a really, really important thing to see that that's what's, what was happening. That they were being filled and they were able to give out. So why do we gather to praise God? If we can, we can do that in our own homes, can't we? We don't have to do that together. Well, I'm not fully sure of the biblical um, basis for this, but I did check with Steve a few days ago to check that this seemed right. And he said yes, so you know, talk to him if you don't agree. But I think that praise is contagious. It's infectious, which is not a nice word at this time, I know. But in a good way, in a good way, I think praise is, it really is, it's infectious. I think, it, yeah, maybe contagious is a better word. I, I think it's, um, when you come into a place where people are praising God, I think you feel it. I think you gravitate to it even. Or you might, if, you, if you're not in that place, maybe you, 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 you get split because you don't want to be there, but you, you're drawn to it. I think, I think we're drawn to it. I think it's infectious. And I think that's because it helps us focus on God. You know, my job as a worship leader, Nikki's job here as a worship leader, is not to look good, <laughs> thank God, um, or, or sound good, Particularly, I mean, yes, we, wanted, we want all of that to be good, you know. We want our music to be great. 
We want it to be as, as excellent as we can have it. But actually, our job is, as worship leaders and as, as, a, as a worship team, is to point to God, is to remind us of who God is, what he's done, and what he's like. And when we, do, when we do that together, especially, I think there's just something so infectious about that and contagious about that. And it lifts us up. When we do that together, we can even stand with each other through these things, you know? You might, you might find you come in and you're struggling and there's someone here. I pray that we're a church that do that, that look out for each other and can stand with each other and point to God point to him, remind each other of who he is, what he's done, and what he's like. So I just want to pray um, to finish, just to really, um, yeah, about, about anything that, that, that becomes a barrier for us in praise. So Lord, we thank you. I thank you for this church. I thank you for whether, whether it's people here in the building or watching online today, it doesn't matter. We are your church. We are yours, Lord. And we want to be people who are disciplined and devoted to this, this rhythm of inhaling and exhaling when it comes to our worship, of f- being filled with your spirit filled with the goodness of you, filled with, with uh, the things of you, and give out praise. Give out to people, to shine out to people, Lord. And Lord, I pray for any of us today, it's probably all of us in different ways, I'm sure, but if there's any, anything that stands, anything that's a barrier, to us praising you, to us remembering who you are, then I pray that you would remove those barriers today. I pray this for each and every one of us. Would you remove the barriers to remembering who you are and to praising you, Lord, today? Amen. I think Nikki and Bandy, you're going to come up and carry on, and we're going to do just that. We're going to praise God. That's going to be our response today. Thank you, Noel. Um, yeah, so, yeah, let's just focus on him and just praise him now. Amen.
As we were praying there at the uh, at the end of Nas' sermon, um, Steve really felt that if there is anyone here who really does feel that barrier to worship, that there is something that's stopping you really entering into worship, and you would like to get over that to break that barrier down, um, we'd like to offer prayer for you. Um, if you'd like to, if you want to make yourself known to Steve or to myself at the end of the service, um, or we'd like to pray with you um, about that. Um, as we've seen this morning, praise and worship is such a wonderful thing and really brings us into the presence of God. I don't know if we've got children in to show us anything. No, it was quiet. Okay, we'll have a blessing then. <laughs> now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us now and always. Amen. <laughs>